another episode of our This Travel Tribe podcast. Today is going to be a really fun episode because we are going to be learning all about visiting India with your family. I don't know if you've thought about visiting India before, um, but I'm hoping that after listening to today's episode, it's on your radar and it's on your wish list because it really sounds like such an amazing place. And we have a guest here with us today. Her name is Sarah Steiner. And she knows a lot about India. She's traveling in India currently with her family and has been there before. And she has so much information to share with us and such great energy. I just really appreciate Sarah taking time to join us. And I'm even going to mention this is our third time recording, which is <laughs> so crazy. So third time's a charm, right, Sarah? Here we, It's all my fault okay. every time. So anyway, she's amazing, so patient, so much energy, and she's so happy. And so Sarah, thank you for coming and joining me here. Um, do you want to take a minute and introduce yourself? Definitely. And namaste from India. Hi, namaste. everyone. And thank you so much, um, Lisa, for having me on here. I'm really, I'm really happy to be here. So no worries at all. And um, yeah, my name's Sarah. I'm a full time traveling mum from New Zealand. I travel with my two boys, Harry and Oscar. They are eight and 10 years old and my husband, Gavin. And we have been traveling around the world for um, more than four and a half years full-time now we left New Zealand um, at the very beginning of 2019 when our boys were three and five years old and yeah they're now eight and ten and I'm currently um, talking to you from Jasalmer in India um, and we are here for the next three months and we love to travel to anywhere we love to travel to lesser traveled lesser visited countries and over the last year we've had an amazing experience going all around Asia and the Middle East we've just um, in the last 12 months been through Bangladesh um, India Pakistan um, Saudi Arabia Bahrain and Kuwait um, Iran Iraq uh, Syria Lebanon um, lots of Europe uh, Morocco Mauritania so we love meeting people. It's our favorite thing to do. And we love learning about new countries and new cultures. So yeah, greetings from India. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for fitting us in to all these adventures and sharing with us today. Now, I think the first thing that people might think about when they're planning a trip to India is how do I get there? And like, where would I plan to fly into? So do you want to tell us what people should plan there? Yes, and it's a kind of perfect place to start with a quick, great question to start with because we just arrived in India about two weeks ago and we flew into New Delhi, which is the capital of India, and it is the most popular, most sort of natural choice for people on there, especially on your first trip to India. It's a huge city and contrary to what you might be imagining about the airport there in New Delhi, it is super duper modern we actually were just um writing about it and trying to um imagine as if it was our first time flying into new delhi and you honestly could be anywhere in the world it's a great place to start with you do need to get a visa online which is really easy and then flying into new delhi is a great place to start in a great sort of yeah jumping off point to go and explore india okay so i'm thinking since you find a new delhi of course you would explore there um, but then yes. what other places do you recommend people have on their radar for visiting if they're planning a trip to India? That's a great question. So I think um, the first thing I would do, I really recommend getting um, some kind of day tour or even a half day tour in Delhi just to find your feet. We always like to do that in a new place and just sort of to have that first connection with someone there that you can actually talk to and ask the questions you want to know. Um, our first thing to do every time we arrive in India is to go and um, get some clothes and but I can tell you about what to wear later um, but then getting out of New Delhi um, the most popular and most common um, destinations for a first time sort of introduction to India is called the Golden Triangle and so that includes Delhi and then you go south about five to six hours um, to Jaipur which is known as the Pink City and that is the city of palaces it is spectacular it's in Rajasthan which is one of the desert um one of the desert cities there and 
and it is just yeah it's beautiful it has forts and palaces and it really has this sort of pink hue to it like this pink shade um and from there the other part of the triangle is Agra where the Taj Mahal is and that's about four about another four to five hours from Jaipur and then back to Delhi so those three cities would be the most popular and definitely the best place to start that gives you kind of a real taste of Rajasthan but especially of yeah getting to see sort of the best I think of India maybe the most iconic of India so okay so how do you recommend yeah. that people get around? Because four to five hours is pretty far. Like, do you drive? Do you hire a driver, yeah. train? Yeah. What up? What do you recommend? So it's, um you've got really two options. And I think India, well, has, sorry, you've got far more than two options. You've got all kinds of, you could get a camel if you wanted to. Anything <laughs> is possible in India. But um, the most likely and most common um, thing, you could either hire a driver and go around by car or what we love to do and what I reckon you can't visit India without riding on the trains of India. And the trains are like the soul of the country. It is definitely an experience and adventure within itself. They are so efficient. It's actually the, the India Railways is the sixth largest employer in the world. It is enormous, the size of it. And it goes pretty much, I'm sure you can go to any destination in the country by train. Um, there's eight different classes of trains, so you can ride in first class if you want, you can go in second or third class, um, which is a really economical way to go around, you can try sleeper class where like the windows are open, um, that's our favourite journey between Jaipur and Agra, it's just a short train ride, sometimes it's about three to four hours, and um, we go in sleeper class for that, which is like the the cheapest I think it would cost maybe two US dollars or three US dollars for this um, and, and the windows are open there's people serving chai and through the windows you get to meet and talk, talk to other people it's an awesome awesome experience yeah it sounds like it so definitely I recommend getting around by train, train. okay yeah and then, <laughs> yeah and you don't have to even worry about drivers and it sounds like you don't rent a car and drive yourself around no, I definitely wouldn't recommend renting a car. And then when you're in the cities, the best way to get around is by rickshaw, auto rickshaw. There are cycle rickshaws for like the, um, so there's some sort of like pedestrian areas of the city, like in the marketplaces. But the auto rickshaw, the tuk-tuk is just such a fun and definitely such, I mean, they're amazing little, they're just so iconic for India as well and such a efficient way to get around. So it's fun. It, it's really fun. Yeah, so getting around is part of the fun experience of even visiting yeah. India. I yeah. reckon it totally is. We actually yes. love it or to the travel days. And we just came by train um, out to Jasalma here. Um, this was an 18-hour train overnight from um, Delhi to Jasalma. And this time we rode in second class, which was cost... I think it might be maybe about 15 US dollars per person. And we had a cabin with four um, berths in it, four bunks. The kids loved it. They had the best sleep ever. We slept pretty well, but um, there's, I don't know, I just went to sleep thinking about the sound of the train and I was just thinking how incredible it is to be traveling this way. You know, it's such an amazing way to travel. So we love it. Yeah, so fun. I know I saw that on your stories on Instagram this yeah, couple days ago. And I was like, that's so fun. In real time, it's a, um, yeah. yeah, it is. It's a great adventure. So fun. <laughs> okay. So we've talked about getting there and how to get around. Um, but now what about yeah. accommodations? Like what kind of places would people expect to find in India? And what do you recommend? Awesome. Um, so yeah, you can do India however you want to. Like if you want to do it luxuriously and stay in these huge hotels and things in the city you could stay in. But I reckon the best way to see India is to, you have to ride the trains to get there, but the best way to see India is staying in like a small guest house. So in all of the cities have like there's big hotels and then there's guest houses, which are much more sort of personal experience. So this um, guest house we're staying in now is called Wonderlust Guest House in Jasalma, and it is our favorite place in the whole of India. Um, this one costs about 30 US dollars per night for our family of four. Um, it has amazing, it is so clean. We have a family room with two single beds, a double bed, and um, it has a rooftop restaurant here with like a, just a small restaurant. It only has six rooms in the whole guest house. 
and there's always other travelers to meet in India. It's a great place to meet people, swap connections of where to go, you know, which restaurant to go to or which rickshaw driver, you know, has given you their number to pass on. Um, but the rooftop restaurant from here looks out over this, this is the golden city, by the way, it looks out over a fort that was built in 1156 wow. AD. This one here, from this from this sort of humble small guest house, we can see this fort. It's the oldest living fort in the world, um, by the way. It's got three and a half thousand people that live inside the fort. Oh, wow. And it's, so it's 870 years, um, yeah, something like that. There was something built in 1156 AD anyway. And it is, that's the view from the rooftop restaurant and they can make you delicious food anything you want here um so i recommend the guest houses and homestays are a great way to start okay and how do you yeah. recommend people find the guest houses like do you is there a certain website just for yeah. india guest houses um, so or what do you use um so we just use booking.com and i really it's massive. I I use um, a combination. So lots of I found on people's blogs or I saw on stories where had other people stayed, like a real, I always feel like it's somewhere you want to sort of know that another real human being or another family has stayed there and that they found it, you know, safe and welcoming or they particularly rated the food or the, you know, location or something. Um, and most often in here, it's the host that has a great rating that you can you know you connect with that host and you can recommend them so um we book through booking.com most of them i found through yeah other sort of personal connections or yeah i and that's what we want to share all these places that we've found um now because i know it's not easy it's like and starting looking for a needle in a haystack um yeah so it's a booking.com is a great way to be able to read the reviews of and you can see other families you can see other families from your country that have stayed there and yeah see what they recommend okay and then do the guest houses typically include food or is that paid for separately because I know you said they have a restaurant so I'm just curious if that's included yes so even the small guest houses here, majority of them, I think pretty much every single one includes breakfast and it is a great, um, it's a fantastic, oh, well, actually breakfast can be a big a range of breakfast, but um, they have a great way to start the day. Just a simple breakfast will be like um, maybe eggs and toast or um, bananas. Um, you can have an Indian style breakfast or you can have just, yeah, eggs to start the day. And um, it's included, it's a, a tea and coffee. It's um, included in your accommodation and for 30 US dollars, 30 to 50 US dollars maybe for a guest house. It's so okay. affordable and yeah, I reckon it's a great saving as well and sets us up for a great day. And it means you talk to people as opposed to when you're in a huge hotel, like you, you know, you can talk to the host and they can recommend you where to go. And it, yeah, helps you to sort of find your way as well in India. Mm -hmm. So I, I highly recommend the guest houses. Okay. And now we've kind of talked about food started. So I think we should just keep talking about it. Um, I think when people think about India, they might be concerned about food safety. <laughs> Um, and then, so if you want to tell us yeah. just a little bit about food safety and then just what kind of food you've enjoyed and like what people could expect when they come, you know, what kinds of things would they get to enjoy? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Well, we love food in our family. It's got to be one of our favorite parts of travel. I think meeting people and then getting to try all different kinds of food. So, um, but India is somewhere that as soon as you say you're going to India, people like have a really mixed reaction and most people worry instantly that they're going to get sick when you get here so there's lots you can do to um yeah to to, to make safe choices i mean india has the most diverse cuisine of any because it's such a huge country has so many different states that each state has a different like environment whether you're up north in the mountains or down by the sea or here in the desert um and so they have such a varied cuisine it's awesome to try cuisine from different parts of India um it's a great I reckon that starting in your guest house is a good place to start and especially if people have given good reviews of how the food was there so here um the last three we've been here in Jasima just the last three nights for example our host here um he has like a there, there's a cook that works in the kitchen this small kitchen here but um the last three nights our actual host has cooked for us the night before last he just was like 
we said we want some anything with vegetables just surprise us and he said I'm going to make you some kind of Rajasthani style of home cooking so he literally went to the market it's about 100 meters away and came back with all these vegetables and an hour later we had the most amazing fresh home cooked meal here tonight we had this um dinner that was um another like from the desert there's not so many um fresh fruit and vegetables that grow here like it's so tonight we had this um it was i can't remember the name of it but it was like a cross between a melon and a cucumber mate we tried it raw as the like a I think it would be a fruit but it made into a curry with the most fluffy white rice like it's just absolutely delicious um but our kids yesterday our kids just had pasta with like a tomato and vegetables um you can the kids often eat fried rice or um for breakfast they just love to have fried eggs eggs and toast so just keep it simple um bananas are always a great go-to because they come in their own hygienic wrapping and um it's a great yeah a great option um sometimes it's very easy to find um like packaged simple biscuits or um yeah no, not great for the health but great for <laughs> um great for kids when they have snacks and stuff that's easy so um there's always plenty of options and obviously you need to keep really hydrated because it's warm here. So yeah, yeah. I think and just I, choosing and drinking bottle and, so where it's busy. and then you would want bottled water, right? I'm assuming that you're not drinking. Yes, from we do. Well, yes, we do. Yeah, we drink bottled water here, which um is quite, um we just come last month, we were in Nepal where the water is amazing in the mountains and um so here it is really hard to yeah the water and the plastic is a real challenge so we're actually just working with Padam this week in our guest house that we're staying in here and we are going to get a water filter station installed and oh. it's just one small way that we can hopefully contribute to lessen the um, plastic mm -hmm. but we were saying how it would be yeah a great asset to their guest house to be able to offer that as well so yeah keep safe and keep the environment mm -hmm. as, as well as we can as well so yeah yeah. Now, India, I, I think that a lot of them are vegetarian eaters. So do you eat much meat while you're there? Or what is that like? Um, we actually don't. We also, that's a great, um, yeah, that's a great point. We off, we choose a lot of vegetarian food while we're here. There is a, a lot of India is vegetarian and particularly like maybe South Indian um, style of cuisine is often vegetarian. Um, so we feel like it kind of lessens the risk a bit of getting sick or anything. So, and they have, because there's so many, a huge percentage of the culture is vegetarian. There's like limitless options of what you can choose for vegetarian options. And um, the other thing is that um, we drink, oh, sorry, we like have a lot of curd. We have like, they call it curd, like a yogurt. Um, we have a curd for breakfast almost every day and they serve it with just about every meal, um, which is an awesome, like natural probiotic and good for your gut health as well. So we kind of, yeah, do everything we can to keep as healthy as, yeah, as we can. And we have been absolutely fine at traveling in India. So um, I don't want to jinx it, but <laughs> yeah, just making good choices and yeah, so yeah. keeping healthy, yeah. but there's, yeah, lots of tips. So all good advice. Okay. So after the food, which I know is so important because I know for our family too, we love the food, but I think next for families would be activities. Yeah. Like what kinds of things would they come and expect to experience if they're visiting India? Awesome. Um, well, the big, the biggest cities and the sort of most iconic sites of India are very, very like historic like the town yeah, hold on I'm gonna ask you the such... question I'm gonna ask you that question again because you it paused so it's fine we can edit no okay problem. sorry okay okay so okay. you know we love food I mean food's like one of the best things about traveling um but then I think next people want to hear about activities and like what kind of fun things or experiences could they have if they plan a trip to India Awesome. Okay. Well, so India has such, such a rich history, like on the architecture and obviously the most famous sites like the Taj Mahal and the palaces and forts and things like that. So there's all the history and the sort of culture in that way. But um, there's also some awesome activities that we've most enjoyed as a family. Definitely travel days and traveling on the train is like 
a sort of um well it is like a experience or like a sight in itself because it is such an adventure so that turns into be our sort of you know yeah part of I guess it is the adventure of India but so here yeah in the desert our favorite our favorite activity as a family and we've done it I think four times is going on a camel safari here in the desert that um and awesome. from from Jasselmer we go out it's about um we drive yeah you drive out into the desert um and then ride camels for about an hour and a half um it's just uh, in the sunset there in the desert it's not like the same kind of camel safari that you might do in Jordan or in Morocco it's totally unique here and it really feels like you start in the village like when you ride out into sunset and you literally cook dinner over a campfire there over a fire and sleep on stretches underneath the stars and it truly is the most magical kind of experience um yeah tonight from this guest house they've got four people that have just gone out and we were all talking when they went out today how it's going to be just spectacular because it is a full moon tonight and it's just so peaceful. It's like an experience like, yeah, no other. Yeah, I don't think you could find that anywhere else. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> oh. so, cool. so what else do you think families would enjoy doing in India? I think no, now, of course, we need to mention the Taj Mahal, but maybe you have some other things you want to mention first. Yes, so um, in Delhi this time around, we particularly loved going to the Lodi Garden. So it's a garden from like the 14th and 15th century. It has these like three really, really old like tombs, like beautiful structures. But the actual garden is 90 acres. Um, it's enormous and it's right in Delhi, like in the center, well, kind of just outside the center of old Delhi. And so under the British rule so it already was a huge garden and green space in Delhi but so under the British rule they turned it into a public space like a garden I guess it was like going to be the Hyde Park of Delhi and it is just a really it's got to be without doubt the most peaceful place in Delhi and we just went and spent I don't know the whole of the afternoon until sunset and the birds you can hear the birds and the insects like it just is beautiful beautiful and people are out walking or exercising um the boys end up playing joining in games of soccer and football there and with this backdrop of like from the 14th and 15th century um but right in the middle of Delhi we were sort of like one of those pinch me moments of is this you know actually where we are and that kind of just is really unique to find those things um in Varanasi the kids were we love taking um, the boats down the River Ganges, which is um, yeah a whole nother um, ball game of learning and culture and religion and everything there. But it's there's just so much to see and so much to absorb. I actually remember we went there first when the boys, um, Oscar was only four years old, I think. And I've got this picture of them like lying on their stomach on the front of the boat and just, yeah, just watching and just taking it all in. It's, yeah. So there's plenty to do. It's total. it's different. Um, you could go to the modern malls and you'd find arcades and all kinds of things if, if that's what you're into. But there is so much, I think it's just so rich in culture and um, yeah, the colors and activities, there's heaps going on. That sounds awesome. Just walking the streets, I'm sure you would find a full day's oh, worth yeah. of just cool things to see and look at and you totally explore. Can. Yeah. Okay. So then we do have the Taj Mahal. Totally I think can. that would be something that would be, you know, really interesting to a lot of people to get there. Um, so what do we need to know about visiting Taj Mahal and like getting there? You had said it was a train ride away and like where to stay. Yes. Whatever else you think we need to know. Oh, definitely. So the Taj Mahal is in Agra and you can't come to India. That would be like coming to India, not riding the trains. You can't come to India without seeing the Taj Mahal. So it is, a, oh, it's such a beautiful experience. So all of the guest houses or hotels in Agra are all within a few kilometers of the Taj Mahal. So most of them have these rooftops and maybe a small restaurant or just seating on the rooftop and you can see the Taj Mahal I remember walking out for the first time and seeing it like from the rooftop and you're just kind of like wow it's right there um it is exactly what it looks like but in real life the best time to go is at sunrise so we left our guest house around just after five and you'll be there at 5 30 a.m in the morning and it's 
it's peaceful as well like it's um that's definitely the quietest time to go you need about two or three hours so it's a great time to get up early go and see the Taj Mahal and then you can go back to your guest house for breakfast afterwards and, and um it's just yeah it's a really sort of uplifting place to see and just wander around it's beautiful to take it all in and the whole story behind it is yeah quite a beautiful moving um love story of the Taj Mahal too so you have to go and see it and yeah make sure you take the time we went um two days in a row last time we were there it was just so great and the second time we went we just took it really slow and we um sat down and we called like a um a, we video called to the boys classroom back in New Zealand and and talk to them all live there from the Taj Mahal, which was awesome. So <laughs> it's so a really cool. special place to be. Now, do yeah. you have to buy tickets ahead of time or can you just show up? Yep. So you could buy tickets ahead of time that you buy them the night before, you just buy them the day for, day before. So you probably really, you need like two days in Agra. Um, yeah, two nights would be um, plenty in Agra. Um, but your guest house will be able to buy them online and it's quite cheap. I can't remember now exactly. It's quite it's reasonable. Like for one of the wonders of the world, it's amazing that it is so reasonably priced. Your guest house will um, be able to organize that for you and they'll just get a rickshaw will be waiting to take you to the Taj Mahal in the morning. And um, it is closed on Friday because it's um, closed for prayer, for Islamic prayer on Friday. So do make sure you factor that in and don't turn up with just a Friday to go and visit. But, um, and then there's otherwise, there's the beautiful um, re, uh, red fort there as well, and the Agra fort, sorry, in Agra to go and see as well afterwards, or you can see sunset from the other side of the river, looking back at the Taj Mahal. So there's plenty to keep you busy in Agra that for a couple of days. Sounds magical. I love that. Okay. Now you talk about like a lot of rickshaw drivers or hiring drivers or just service people. And I'm wondering what tipping is like in India. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And um, that's um, interesting to answer because in New Zealand, we don't, um, tipping is not common practice. So it's something that we always, you know, have to make sure we're doing the right thing and stuff. So here, yeah, because the wages um, are so low and um, people's incomes are often really, really low, prices are also very low. And we've had such um, great experiences with all our, yeah, rickshaw drivers, drivers that we've had and sort of services that we've had. Um, for example, Gavin got his shoes, like a patch put inside his trainer's sneakers the other day by um, like a cobbler in Delhi. Um, he charged him 20 cents to have it fixed. So, um, and he just did this, you know, amazing, such a great job. Um, and you, you, you have to, I mean, you can't not, you know, we, we want to give so much more to people like that. It's just so, yeah, definitely, definitely tipping. It costs around about 100 rupees, which is probably a um, $1. twenty to go somewhere in a rickshaw within the city. It's so reasonable. Um, what else? I had something stitched <clears throat> for about 50 rupees, which is, yeah, probably 60 cents or something. Um, prices are so cheap. So definitely tipping is, yeah, we need to tip. Yeah. And that makes a big difference to them. And the extra yeah. dollar to, you know, you isn't going to make a, a dent yeah. and right. So, but making a big yeah. difference to, yeah, it does make a big difference. Feels yeah. Like an important contribution you can make while you're traveling. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's see. Oh, general safety. I know some people might be kind of unsure about India or just like, is it safe? Can I wander around with my kids? Like what has your experience been with that? Yes, so um, we have a great experience with safety and I can honestly say that we have always felt safe in, in India and I've always, as a woman, I've always felt safe and I think, um, I mean, we wouldn't, we don't want to travel anywhere that's not safe with our kids anyway, but so I think, but we're always, um, you're always aware and it is, the cities are huge, like they're enormous, some of the cities are like mega cities and some of the most densely populated cities in the world. So there's lots going on. You need to, um, you know, talk with your kids and make sure that they're they're ready for that and you're ready for that. And we always keep a really close eye on them. I would say <clears throat> the traffic is um, something that you definitely need to watch out for. There's cows and rickshaws and motorbikes and things going past so fast and lots happening. So safety for traffic safety is a big thing. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> <clears throat> And um, but um, people are really curious. There's lots of um, the women are much sort of shyer, quieter, especially um, in the villages, in the cities. 
it's a bit more westernized and a bit more modern but um there's lots of men all around and they're very curious they they want to stare and know where you're from and ask so and um talk to you and take photos so um getting to oh sorry i'm gonna have to pause oh, you're fine. <laughs> i'm just gonna grab a water yeah, one second yep, I do that you've been had to talk for a long time sorry um sorry <laughs> that was a um no problem yeah. <laughs> so, oh good um yeah so should i start again about the um safety um thanks okay, sure some water yeah um, um yes so yeah so it's so busy in the cities the traffic definitely needs um watching out for there's rickshaws and cows and cycle rickshaws and motorbikes going past in all directions um but there's lots of the people there's you know it's so densely populated the women are much more reserved especially in the villages in the cities they're a bit more westernized and the women are out there but um it's the men that are around they're very curious they want to you know see you we've got two very blonde like uh, boys and we stand out like a light bulb everywhere we go anyway um, but so I found that the best thing is just to talk to people and to um, learn a few words in Hindi so we can say, you know, um, how are you or what's your name and, you know, to introduce ourselves and say our name. People always want to know which country you're from and then they want to know, do you like India? So I think talking to people really helps with making a connection and just general feeling of feeling safe there and feeling like you're, yeah, you know, kind of what's going on and stuff. So. Yeah, we have always felt safe here. And yeah, we love meeting people and talking to people. I love that. Okay. Another question <laughs> that people probably have is yes. what to wear when you're going to India? Like, can you just wear shorts and t-shirts or <laughs> what do you recommend? Awesome. Well, I love this question and um, I may have gone a little bit out of control this time when we <laughs> arrived in Delhi and went to the market, but um it is such a colorful country and um, the clothing is a huge part of it and a huge part of, yeah, the joy that we get here as well. It is a modest country. Like <clears throat> it's not super strict about what you're wearing. And I suppose you can, um, you know, it does, there's not sort of rules of, you know, showing things and stuff, but I reckon that we dress modestly. The most common um, outfit for ladies is a salwar kameez or a kurta top in these really loose just cotton they call them like pajama trousers and a scarf and so it's like a three-piece outfit um almost all the women in the cities they're all wearing that and um it's cost about five to five to ten us dollars for a three-piece set here you can just buy a couple of those that's all you'll need for the trip um but we find like if we dressed respectfully and dressed modestly ourselves. you kind of yeah you get out what you put in so I think if you um, are respectful to start with then you it's a way easier way to connect with people and they really appreciate wearing local clothes and they're really excited to see you in their you know in their traditional clothes so it's a good sort of starting point to talk to people and it's super comfy and obviously designed perfectly for being here so the kids are just wearing our boys are just wearing a shorts and a t-shirt during the day and um we all just wear sandals um while we're walking around exploring and um on travel days the kids wear <clears throat> long trousers or if we're going out to visit temples or mosques then they need to have long trousers on as well and um, men need to have uh trousers like yeah, to go and visit the mosques. It's expected mm -hmm. to have, um, yeah, longer trousers on. But apart from that, um, and they can give you, um, if you go to the mosque and you don't have your shoulders covered or something as a woman, there are like robes. They are quite strict to visit the um, Jama Masjid mosque and things like that. They'll give you a robe to wear and yeah, a scarf, but always okay. carry a scarf. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I love your outfit. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see Sarah's cute outfit <laughs> and it would be so hard to choose to go to the market. And that would be part of the fun thing though. Like you said, you arrive and then you go to the market and you pick out the clothes you're going to wear. So that makes for easy packing. All right. Now I know that you, your family is doing some hosted trips and I'm so curious about that. I know that you had mentioned to me that you have a couple coming up, like one in October and one in November. Um, like, what does that involve and 
yeah, just <laughs> like, what are the details of that? Oh, that is really cool. I love to talk about that. We um decided this year in our, um, when we got to four years of full-time travel that we really, we wanted to, um, to yeah, pay it forward and really share all the places that we've been and to share these amazing contacts like this guest house where we're staying right now. We wanted to find ways to share it and have other families to um, experience the joy that we get from being here. So um, this year we decided to do some group trips um, in India where we have so many amazing contacts and connections. And so we have other families coming with us in October and November to come and travel with us both trips and um, we're doing our 11 days and we are going to be all around Rajasthan we're coming from New Delhi the first thing we'll go and buy some awesome clothes at the market <laughs> in Delhi and then we're coming out to the desert in um, Jasalmer here go on a camel safari sleep under the stars here we're going to ride the trains um, back towards Jaipur and Agra to the Taj Mahal and basically stay with these small guest houses, meeting the people that make India so special for us. So we're really excited. That's amazing. And so <laughs> listeners, you can follow along on Instagram. I don't think we've mentioned Sarah's Instagram handle yet. It's away with the Steiners. So I think it would be really fun to watch these trips that you're hosting for people to come over Um I know I want oh, to watch. It's, it's, it's kind our of trips are um, full, really full for this year, but we are going to do it again in April next year. We want to do it all over again. So this year we're going to share all of the trips online and share. Yeah. So if you want to see what it's like traveling in India as a family, it'll be a great way to see, yeah, a first glimpse of it. Yeah. And if people did want more info on that, what would be a good way to find out more <coughs> to or to reach out to you about that? Um, our, so we've got all of the information online on our website. So we have the whole trip documented there. And <coughs> oh my gosh, sorry. I'm sorry. Gonna stop. <laughs> You're fine. I'm just, do you want to just take a drink? Take You're another drink of water. Yeah, oh, um, of course. I'm just, yeah. well, you've I'm had to here. talk sorry. for a very long time now. I'm sure your voice is like, enough. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> no, no worries at all. Okay, sorry. What was okay? It? Let's see. I'll ask where, where they. Can, I'll ask again. Okay. Are you good, or do you want a minute to like? No, I think I'm good. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, it's so bad. Sorry about that. I hope I'm going to be right to keep going. Oh, oh my bad now. You're, okay. Okay. So, if people are interested in joining you on one of these hosted trips, uh, where would they find out more information on that? Oh, so. so we have all the details on our website about our group trips in India and a few others, but um, we've listed, um, we want these trips to be really unique. Well, they are going to be so unique. We're doing lots of things that's really different. So we have, have all the details. We want to take people to come and meet Nati, the guy here with the chai shop here in um, Jasalma. We want to take them to meet our um, Raja, our rickshaw driver in Jaipur and to go around there to stay with Franjana and her family in Agra and see the Taj Mahal. So some really different ways of um, traveling around India that we want to share with others and have them, yeah, experience the joy of India like that. So, and meet all these that. amazing people. That's so cool. So I will link to your website over on or the show notes for this episode. So if you're listening and you're interested or you're just like, oh, I'm curious, um, head over to the show notes. Or of course you can just follow Sarah over at Away With The Steiners on Instagram and you can see what they are up to. So, so much fun. I mean, India sounds so magical. I love your energy and your excitement around it. I think you're going to have to come next time. I think so, definitely. Okay, so now I love to wrap up episodes with three final questions. So first of yes. all, what is one of your favorite places that you have visited? Um, I'm going to have to say... Uzbekistan I think which is one of the first places we went in our very first year of travel and it was the first time we really met and we were hosted by a local family there and we had um, from traveling as a family we literally just bumped into this guy who said come and visit our family in our home and um, it was definitely kind of it was like yeah, life changing for us. It did totally change the way that we travel as a family now. And um, it really cemented for us that the most, the our sort of most 
valuable part of travel is definitely through meeting other people and having the connection with other families. So that's what's really special to us and that's what's become part of our full-time travel. Yeah, the, definitely the priority and the highlights of our full-time travel is meeting other families. I love that. Okay, so what is one item that you love to take with you on every trip? Now you're full-time traveling, so you have a lot of stuff with you or all your stuff, right? But what's one thing you think is essential? <laughs> um, I'm going to have to say a scarf. I always have a scarf everywhere I go. Um, it's useful for me or the kids or anyone who needs it for any kind of um, covering up or as a blanket or a um, picnic blanket or a hijab, whatever you need it for. Definitely a scarf is a great thing. Multi-purpose. Okay. Multi and, totally yes. multi-purpose. and then where are you going to go next? So I know you're in India while, but what's next? Um, we haven't sort of cemented anything and um, booked anything in yet, but I'm pretty sure we are going to cross back over the Wagga border from Amritsar in the north of India back to Pakistan, which is another country that we absolutely, absolutely love. Like Uzbekistan, like India, um, Pakistan is one of our favorite places in the world. And yeah, it's a beautiful country to travel as a family as well. So oh, I hope you have I think a we'll be going back there. Before. Good. Hope you have a fantastic time there. <laughs> All right. This has been so much fun, Sarah, yeah. talking with you three times. So third time was a charm. This was so fun. Um, but learning so much about India, I mean, there's so much to see and explore and just taste. And it just sounds like such a fantastic place. So I'm excited for you that you get to be there with your family and that you now get to share that with other families and with us today. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for all that you do and for sharing all these amazing places and other families. And yeah, I hope it inspires other people to yeah come to India. And if you have any other questions or want any other details, um, big or small questions, let me know. And if you want any of the contact details of drivers or places to stay, yeah, there's so much to share. So we want to share all that. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Me. Of course. Thank you for coming. Thank you.